So if you ask me what's the hardest thing about being a dive instructor, this is how I would answer it. It's not the teaching. Teaching's pretty easy. As long as you understand the methodology of how to teach, teaching's really, really easy. And of course, you do have to know the material. Um, it's not the diving. Diving is by far the easiest thing about it. Um, even the stressfulness of taking new divers, new open water divers underwater for the first time, that can be very stressful, but it's still not that difficult. If you're a seasoned instructor and you've done this as a career, it's actually pretty easy to do. But for me personally, the hardest thing about being a dive professional or being a dive instructor is logistics. Logistics is my Achilles heel. That's what just completely dumbs me down as a dive instructor because for me, it's not really fun dealing with logistical matters. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit the little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going to talk about something that I feel like gets skipped over a lot during ITC programs. If you're not familiar with an ITC program, that's an instructor training course. This is the course you take to learn how to be a dive instructor. And there's tons of things that you actually learn during that course. You learn teaching methodologies, whether it's lecture-based, prescriptive learning, or active learning learning. You really learn about the standards of whatever agency you're with, and you just learn about the tools and the tips and the tricks of the industry, and it helps you b become an instructor, if you will. It doesn't really help you be an instructor. It just helps you become an instructor. But one of the things that I feel like ITCs are lacking is there's not a lot of information in there about logistics and how to plan for logistics. There's a little bit about how would you do a class if you had multiple students doing different courses, but there's really not a lot about planning trips for your customers or planning trips for your clients, for your students and things like that. So I wanna show you a logistical nightmare that I dealt with about two months ago where I spent two weeks down in Florida. And even though it was a great trip and I got to travel all over Florida from North Florida to West Florida, all the way down to South Florida, it was a logistical nightmare for me. And I wanna kinda of explain why it is by giving you the story of what actually happened. And then hopefully this will help you reconsider you know, when you want to become a dive instructor, all that's actually involved. Because you may be fortunate enough that you're an instructor for a shop and you never have to leave. Maybe you're in the tropics and that's the only place you're at. Well, if you're like me, I'm a, I own an inland dive shop in the state of North Carolina and I'm constantly traveling, whether I'm driving somewhere or flying somewhere. Sometimes logistics can be a total nightmare for me. So with that being said, let's jump into my story and I'm going to show you all the different things I had to do just to make this trip go smoothly. So my story starts out in North Florida, what we call cave country. If you're not familiar with cave country, basically it's just the Northern Florida area to where all the caves and the caverns are, it's all the freshwater springs, and it's basically just farmland out there. There's no beaches or anything like that. Um, and there's a lot of beautiful places, Blue Grotta, Devil's Den, Jenny Springs, Troy Springs, Manatee Springs, and I can go on and on and on, Peacock Springs. There's tons of them that you can actually go to. Well, on this specific trip, we started out at Jenny Springs. When I said we, it's a group of divers and group of students that were actually meeting in different locations at different times, doing different courses and different dives. Well, we started out at Jenny Springs and I actually started out with two students. Now, my first student was a rescue diver student. So all we had to do is meet up, make three dives that first day, and boom, he's got his rescue diver cert. The next day I had to meet up with a solo diving student, yet again at Jenny Springs, and I had to make three dives with that solo diving student, and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, now he's a solo diver. But there's more to it than just that. I couldn't just show up and dive. You see, each of those classes required different types of gear, so I had to take different types of gear with me. I took standard back mount recreation for my rescue student, and then I had to take my side mount gear for my solo course. But it doesn't necessarily stop there. You see, it was also the middle of the winter time and it was still in the 30s and 40s outside. Yes, even Florida get down to the 30s and 40s. And so it was really cold. Even though the water was 72 degrees, I didn't really wanna be cold when I got out of the water. So of course I took a dry suit and not just one dry suit, I took 
two dry suits. You see, the first dry suit that I took was my neoprene. You guys know I love my neoprene dry suit. It's very flexible. It's really warm. Keeps me warm above and below water. I don't have to wear a lot of uh, undergarments. And it really came in handy for the rescue diver course because it's slender on my body. It's custom fitted to me. And it was very easy for my student to get me in and out of my gear while wearing that. And yes, I do try to make it easy on my students. The second dry suit I took, though, was for the solo diving class, and that was my tri-laminate. It's a front entry, self donning model, super easy to get in and out of. It is warm with the right undergarments. But the reason I did that is because the context of what I was teaching. I was teaching solo diving. And I didn't want a suit, i.e. my neoprene suit, that I had to zip up across the back and have a buddy to do it. Because in solo diving, we simply don't have buddies. So I was going to show my student, hey, if you're going to be solo diving and you're going to be diving in a dry suit, you might want to consider a suit that is front entry. So you kind of see there was a purpose in taking two different sets of gear and, of course, two different dry suits as well. Now, once that class was over, that was just basically two days. So I had a rescue student the first day, a solo student the next day, and everything went smoothly. Both students got certified. But then I had to drive to a different part of Florida because I was actually hitting three more spring systems. I was hitting Devil's Den with an open water student. I was hitting Blue Grotta with an open water and deep student. And then, of course, I was hitting Rainbow River with a drift diving or waves, tides, and current student. And of course, I had other divers meeting us as well. I even had a couple of dive masters and even had another assistant instructor with me as well. So I had to travel and teach different classes. So when I went to Devil's Den and I met with my open water student, of course, I switched back to my standard back mount open water gear. And then when I had my deep student, I switched back over to my side mount gear. And then when I went to the uh, do the drift dive with the drift diving students down Rainbow River, of course, I switched back to back mount yet again. So I had to take all this gear. I had to make sure that I had lodging for all these different places. And I had to make sure that I could get us all into these destinations as well. But we're not done. You see, that was just the first four days of the trip. Well, technically five days. That was a Monday through Friday. That following Saturday, I had to drive all the way to the east coast of Florida. And of course, I had to go down to a dealer summit. If you're not familiar with dealer summits, that's where a bunch of SSI dealers get together. We talk about how our year's been. We see new updates through SSI. And I actually spent two days at the dealer summit. Well, logistically speaking, Orlando's not cheap to stay in. So that was just another hotel that I had to get. And we're just on day number six. And I've stayed in four different locations. So after our two-day stay there, then I had to head to South Florida. You see, I was actually taking some training. SSI recently released their new public safety programs, which is public safety diving or public safety diver and public safety rescue team diver as well. And I went down as a legacy instructor for the public, public safety part, but for the rescue team diver, I had to take two courses. I had to take the, the rescue team diver course and the instructor version as well so that I could actually teach it once I got back. But this holds another issue. Well, the issue was... I had to take all of my public safety gear as well. So not only did I have back mount recreational gear, deep, solo, technical, whatever you want to call it, side mount gear, both of those two different types of dry suits, I had to take all my public safety gear, which was another dry suit, another BCD, another reg set, another set of fins, another full face mask. You can see I ended up taking three different sets of gear for all these different destinations. Now, of course, I didn't fly with all this gear. I drove, you know, grand total, I'm looking at about a 12 hour one way uh, travel time. So I could very easily do that, but it was a logistical nightmare because on top of all of that, I had to take tanks for every single one of these dives. So I had recreational back mount tanks. I had side mount tanks. I had tanks for public safety. So you can really see the logistical nightmare that I had. Oh, and we didn't even talk about lodging in South Florida. Now, I do want to kind of eliminate that from the story. My uncle lives in South Florida, so it was very easy for me to lodge down there. But let's say that he didn't. I had to make sure that I had lodging for the following week while in South Florida. And you can see very quickly how logistics can be a nightmare as a scuba instructor. 
just because you go on a trip, it's not a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am situation. A lot of times you're meeting multiple students in multiple areas and you've got to have lodging, you've got to have diving, you've got to have airfields, which we didn't even talk about. You see a couple of the places that we went to, there was no airfields. So we had to travel somewhere else just to get those airfields as well. So logistics by far is the most difficultest thing for me as an instructor. It's something I struggle with. Even planning this trip right here. This is an October trip I've got planning for a family. They're doing a private trip. They want me to guide. And it's pretty much booked. The place that we're going out of the country is pretty much booked, so I'm scrambling to find this lodging. I'm scrambling to find diving, you know, charters, or are we going to shore dive? Logistics can definitely be a nightmare. I think it's something that, unfortunately, there's not enough time in ITC programs to truly go over this. And yes, you are going to learn more as an instructor in the field working as an instructor. Um, and you may be fortunate enough that you don't have to worry about logistics. Maybe the shop that you work for does all that for you. They, they get your plane tickets, they get your lodging, they get the whole nine yards for you. But for me as a scuba instructor who is also a shop owner, logistics is a total nightmare for me. And it's something that I don't really enjoy doing, to be honest with you. I love the trips. I love teaching. I love exploring new areas with, with customers and clients and students. And I love certifying people. But logistics, not so much. It's not my strong suit. And when you go through your ITC program, you're going to learn what your strong suits are. Unfortunately, logistics is simply not mine. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it entertaining. And more importantly, I hope you found it educational. I hope it opens your eyes to what we deal with as dive professionals. The reality of it is we don't go and take a class, become an instructor, and then it's all nice and fancy and, and just, you know, warm water. It's there's a lot to being a dive instructor. There's a lot that we've got to go through. And of course, it's all logistical. So yeah, really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you got any questions about becoming a dive instructor or how to plan trips and things like that, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. But that's going to be for it today, guys. Until our next video, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.